Well, hello and welcome to the Sewing Studio. Uh, my name's Jeanette and I'm really pleased to be uh, joining the team here and bringing you some really fun tutorials. Now today I'm going to start with a scrappy one. I do a lot with scraps and I thought I would start by sharing my um, way of dealing with some of the scraps. Now anytime I'm cutting for a project, if I've got a little piece of fabric left over, what I'll tend to do is just cut that into a two and a half inch square or a couple of two and a half inch squares and then I keep them all in this little box and then when the box starts to get full I'll go through and make some projects with them and that's what happened a couple of weeks ago I, I was having a, a sort through and I came across these fabrics and I thought actually they would make some really nice blocks so the block I'm going to do today I've started sewing with those let me just put that to one side and it's called the split nine patch and this is the block so it's a really simple block what you're going to need for it, let me put it there, let me put it that way, because that's the way I orientate it when I'm putting it together. What you're going to need for it is six dark or medium fabrics and five light or background fabrics. Now, I tend to choose fabrics with good contrast. Um, so as you can see here, I'm using a cream for the background, but it's a variety of creams. So there's all sorts here because this is coming from my scrap box. So it's just really using up all those scraps. And the idea is one day I'm going to turn this into a quilt, but it's going to be one of those projects that's probably going on in the background as I'm making other things. So I've gone through my scrap box and I've pulled out the fabrics I need. I've done that ahead of time. I'm actually just going to put them over here. Um, and you can see, and what I'll do is I start by laying out the four patch. So I've picked four two and a half inch squares and I start by laying out the four patch like, like so. We then need to make two half square triangles and these are the fabrics I'm going to use for that. I think I'm going to use this dark brown and maybe that red. And to make the half square triangle, I'm going to, let's just move those out of the way so I can show you what I'm doing here. And I'm just going to grab my ruler and a pen and we're going to draw a line just from corner to corner diagonally on the background of or the back of these two background squares and this is going to be our sew line we're going to sew on the line so in some techniques we sew a quarter of an inch to the side but on this that's actually going to be our sew line so let's just put those out the way there so we're going to match those up to our background squares onto our dark colored fabrics now, when I say I'm going to sew on the line, I'm actually going to sew just slightly to the outside edge, to the right-hand edge, so almost so the needle's touching that outside edge. So let's go over to the sewing machine and do that. So here now, I've actually started just on a little starter piece. I call it my starter scrap, and I tend to do that. Um, it just, particularly if I'm working with small pieces, it just stops the, the needle from pressing corners down into, uh, into the sewing machine. So I'm just going to lift the foot, line up, the needle to the outside edge and now we're going to now we're going to sew and I'm just going to feed the second one in underneath okay so I've made I've sewn across that line or just slightly to the right hand side of it and now I'm going to trim a quarter of an inch away and then we'll take these to the iron and give them a press. Now one thing to watch with this block, it's really important how you press the seams so that they nest together. Now for some of the seams you want to press towards the light for half of the blocks and for the half of the blocks you need to press towards the dark. Now I'm going to press towards the dark side on this and if you notice there I just use my fingers just to open that seam to begin with. The same on this one. Oh it's fiddly. There we are. And that just makes sure that that seam stays nice and straight. And there we are we've given both of those a press. Now I'm just going to check and do a little check to make sure they've still come out at two and a half because if they do need a little trim now is the time to do that. I've got just a little bit to trim there. And sometimes people sort of say, you know, is that important taking off that little bit? But when you're putting together lots of blocks that need to fit into a quilt, absolutely it is. So we need to put those there and I'm just gonna check this one. 
and I'm happy with that one, so that doesn't need a trim. So I can set that aside. And that is all the coloured bits made for the block. So I'm just going to take my background squares and we can lay this block out. And it's a very simple construction. Let's move those little bits out the way. And we've got three background squares. Let's take that little thread off that go there. And that's the block. So let's take that to the machine and sew it. Now I tend to sew by taking this middle row and putting it onto the first row. And then I'm going to sew down all of these seams here. So if I collect them like that, I'll know the order. Let's just line that up. Now I'm up, you'll, you'll know over the coming weeks I'm not much of a pinner. So I am just going to go for it. Put the next one through. And then the last one. And this is called chain piecing, just where you take each little unit and follow them through one after the other. And once we've got those, we can grab the next row. I'm just going to finger press that seam so it goes towards the left. I'm going to put the third, so I'm just checking that again, that, that they look very similar, the back and the front of that fabric looks quite similar, so I was just checking that I've got that piece of fabric the right way round. So this seam I'm pressing towards the right, that one I finger press towards the left, the middle seam I'm pressing, just finger pressing towards the right. And then our block is nearly made. That seam, I'm going to the left again. And this will help when we come to put the block together. All those seams will nest. So we've got our rows. So I'm just going to finger press those again. So that's going to the left, that's going to the right, and this is going to the left again. And then we can put the seams together. So I'm just checking that they nest nicely there. And you can feel it more you, than you can see it. You can actually feel if there's like a bit of a ridge. And then I'm lining up the next one and they should lie nice and flat. So I'm just going to stop and put the needle down. Just check that one again. And then the final seam. So once again, I'm just checking that that's lying nice and flat there. And then I can put the block in under the machine. Okay, there's the block done. I'm just going to take it to the iron and just give it one final press. Now with these, where I've got the seam going towards the dark, I'm going to press the seams down. And if you press the seams in alternate directions, when we come to put these blocks together, they'll uh, nest. So let's just look, make sure on top we've got no tucks or creases. And there's our split nine patch block, all nice and made. So let me just show you some different layouts because one of the reasons I really like this block is because it's really versatile. So let's just have a look at some of the layouts. Let's put that one to one side. So I've got two blocks here where the seams are pressed towards the dark. And I've got two blocks here where the seams are pressed towards the light, which means that when I pair these together and sew them, all of those seams will nest together. So this is the traditional split nine patch block, it comes together like this. So you've almost got a square on top of a square. But there's lots of other layouts we can do. We can turn these two blocks around and you can make blocks that look like flying geese. If we swizzle these around, they'll give us an arrow 
And if you did a whole line of these across your quilt, it, you would have a chevron shape. Then there's also a layout which is called fields and furrows. And that goes like that. And you would have diagonal lines that go across the quilt when you use that layout. You can make diamonds, which is like that. Or any block that uses a half square triangle, you can use this for. So of course you've got the traditional pinwheel. So let's just quarter turn, do that, or a pinwheel block. So that's very quickly and easily six different layouts that you can use this block for. So I hope you have a go at making this. Have a go, have a look through your scraps and see what you've got. Um, share any pictures of anything you make with us through our social media platforms. And we hope to see you here again in the sewing studio.